الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله رب يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير وبك نستعين يا فتاح رب شرح صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيتها النفس المطمئنة ارجعي إلى ربك راضية مرضية فدخلي في عبادي ودخلي جنتي صدق الله العظيم الله سبحانه وتعالى He uses the word nafs in different ways in the Quran and inshallah our focus today will be just touching upon three of the ways that he uses the word nafs or three meanings that he gives for the word nafs now before we get to those three specific meanings let's look at it in a general format he gives it two broad meanings as well so if we use these two words first if we use nafs break it into two categories if i had a whiteboard huh? we break it into two categories okay category number one is that he uses nafs just to refer to the self uh, individual okay the self uh, you know for example he states that وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكْ that remember your lord you know in yourself within yourself okay so referring to the self that's one way, that's one way he uses the word nafs number two and this is the one that we're going to kind of delve into a little bit more deeper is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word nafs and referring to a specific part of that self referring to a specific part of that self for example that part the part of that self it acts upon our desires and our appetite and our anger and our passion and our lust this is that part of the nafs okay this is that meaning of the nafs some people you might call it ego some people call it might be the you know the internal self whatever you want to call it but the the internal desires okay now some people might get confused and what is the ruh then okay if that's the self what is the ruh well, so as far as the physical component of our body we have our jism we have our body okay we have our external body, we have our organs, all of that. That's the physical component. And also attached with that physical component, we have this aspect of uh, the, the nafs. Okay, We have the aspect of the nafs as well. It's not part of the ruh, you know, per se. The nafs is not part of the ruh. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has placed inside of ourselves this inner spiritual uh, component of our creation which we call the ruh that's that inner component when the ruh you know when it all talks about all those verses in the hadith when the ruh leaves the body then that's when the person passes away that's what that's referring to well inshallah if we have time we can talk about that later but i want to talk about specifically how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the term nafs with an adjective so he uses the word nafs then he adds an adjective right after that okay so he uses number one is nafs al-ammara Nafsul Ammara. Number two is Nafs Lawama. Nafsul Lawama. And number three, the one we recited in Salah, Nafs Al Mutama'inna. So these are the three. These are the three. We've covered two of them before. I mean, we've recited two of them before. We've never talked about them, so I thought this was a good chance to kind of talk about all three of them together. So the first one, Nafs Al Ammara. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Nafs Al Ammara in Surah Yusuf. Or he says, Inna nafsa la ammara tum bisu. That indeed the nafs overwhelmingly commands the person to commit sin. It commands and encourages the individual to perform sins. This type of nafs, nafs al ammara, refers to that nafs that dominates the individual. It really just takes over the individual. It is the individual. Yani, whatever the nafs desires, that individual does. Whether it's, you know, jumping from there, whether it's eating this, whether it's talking like this to, you know, in, in, in a bad way, whether it's committing that sin, the individual is saying, following desires, that's he's following Ammarat and Bisu. He's following Nafs al Ammarat. Just literally just following his desires. 
really has no aspect of uh, you know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told me to do what the Prophet Sallallahu told me to do has none of that in his life It's just I feel like this is you know good. I we see this every day in American culture, right? I feel like this is correct Well, I feel like this, you know in in college and university They always taught us, you know always what's what's your what's your expression? Oh, fine. You have your opinion. Okay, but as Muslims our opinion is nothing to the compared to the opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's code is everything Okay and you know we can state whatever we need to say is our opinion but really nobody cares okay that's not going to that's not going to uh, affect what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said okay and really these individuals who have this type of nafs they commit sins um intentionally right without any care whatsoever without any remorse whatsoever uh, for example you see individuals uh, you know, committing sin and they'll, they'll post it on social media. That's what you call nafs al amal. I really have no care. You know, I see Muslims with my own eyes they're drinking, you know, drinking alcohol and they're posting it. They have the, you know, the, 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 the cartons and, and they're drinking it and they post pictures of that online. What is that besides nafs al amal? You're, in, you're, no, you're not even giving us the opportunity to have husn al Like, I want to have husn al for you, but then you're just completely removing that by posting pictures like that. Right. That's what you call nafs al-ammara. And that's what you know the American culture sometimes tries to instill within us. That oh you you have your freedom of, of opinion, you have your freedom of thought in every aspect of life. Yes, you have your freedom, whatever in you know in, in, in regards to your secular sciences, go ahead. In regards to the deen, we have our we have our Quran, we have our Sunnah. If we follow our desires, my goodness, we're gonna be like animals. I mean that's what you see individuals like when they just follow their desires. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but that's what nafs al amara is. Just literally just following your desires. Like just do what you please. Do what you please. Okay. Number two is nafs al lawama. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about, we recited this yesterday in Surah Al Qiyamah. La uqsimu bin nafs al lawama. That I swear by this reproach, reproaching type of uh, nafs. And this, it's better obviously than the first one. This individual blames oneself and, and, and you know, also commits sin, but then after committing the sin, they feel bad. They commit the sin. Okay, don't get me wrong. They commit the sin. Majority of the time they commit the sin, but then they feel bad as well afterwards. And a lot of the times, you know, that's a good, that's good that we have that. We, we have some type of remorse. The other individual, Nafs al they didn't have any type of remorse. Absolutely zero remorse. They committed the sin, like who cares? Let me just do another sin. No, but you have this other individual who doesn't usually commit the sin. They committed the sin and then they feel bad. Okay, they feel some type of remorse. They feel guilt. They feel shame. They don't want to go back to that sin. They don't want to commit it. So they're fighting this battle with the nafs. And sometimes they might commit that sin again. And sometimes they might be able to stay away from it. They're kind of weak. They waver. That's what you call it's nafs al-lawama. Okay, kind of wavering between committing the sin and not committing the sin, you know, falling, you know, committing the sin, but then feeling bad. Okay. Do committing, performing toba. I'm never going to go back to it again, but then the next day again, commits the sin again. Still better than the first one. Okay, still better than nafs al but not quite where we want it to be. Not quite where we want it to be. We don't want to be like D minus Muslims, huh? C minus Muslims. Just barely, you know, make the pay cut type of thing. No. Number three is what we're going to be reciting today inshallah is uh, in surah al-fajr where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states and this is beautiful and i wanted to spend a little bit more time on this one he says ya ayyatuha nafsu al-mutma'inna irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyya fadukhuli fi ibadi wa dukhuli jannati allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gives such a uh, such a, a noble rank to this this type of nafs this is nafsu al-mutma'inna that itma'inan, right? Oh, you guys know in, in Urdu, right? In itma'anna yutma'innu. Itma'inan means to be content. To be content. So it's a content soul. In what sense? It's calm, it's content with the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is obedient. When it abandons this dhikr of Allah, when it abandons the remembrance of Allah, then it feels restless. Then it feels like something's wrong, you know. For example, if we we, we wake up and we we uh, you know we overslept and we miss fajr salah, and then that feeling of you know I don't feel good, 
I don't feel good, you know, I feel like garbage, you know, I, I miss Fajr so long. That's, that's how you're supposed to feel. You're supposed to feel like garbage, you're not like, ah, oh, I miss Fajr, who cares, I'll just pray with the Lord. No, that's, that's not showing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you have the nafs mutma'inna. That means that you don't care. You're supposed to feel bad if you commit a sin. You, you, you're supposed to feel bad if your entire day goes by without remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you probably, you know, notice that more and more you, you, you know, we're getting engrossed in the month of Ramadan. We see every single day we're doing ibadah, 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 and alhamdulillah, it's becoming, it's, it's, it's part of our life now. It's easy, as opposed to in the beginning, remember in the Ramadan, beginning of Ramadan, maybe it was hard, to, it was a little bit hard to fast. It was a little hard to pray tarawih. It was a little hard to go to work while fasting, while praying tarawih. It was very, probably a little bit difficult. But now you're used to it. You got accustomed to it. That's what we're talking about. Nafsul mutma'inna, becoming accustomed to performing good deeds. And when you don't perform the deed, you don't feel good. You don't feel well. Okay. So obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His remembrance becomes that predisposition. It becomes that individual's khuluq and it becomes that individual's characteristics. And the sharia becomes his, his nature. That's how he lives his life. He doesn't have to think twice, oh, I have to... I have to make time for salah. No, it's I have to make time for work because salah is more important. I have to make time for school. I'm going to revolve everything around my deen. I'm going to revolve everything around my salah. I'm going to revolve everything around my Islam. That's what your nafsul mutma'inna is. When your soul is content with the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you don't worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it feels restless. And that's really the... Uh, the, 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 the soul that a believer wants to have. And that's even at the time of mot, even at the time of death, where a hadith of Ubad ibn Sabit, he narrates that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Man ahabba liqa Allah, ahabba Allahu liqa'ahu. Wa man kariha liqa Allah, kariha Allahu liqa'ahu. Whoever loves to meet Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, guess what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is gonna love to meet that individual. And whoever dislikes to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then guess what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to want to meet you either. And then Aisha radiallahu anha, she heard this. And she said that, will we be able to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only after death? You know, but the thing is, we don't, we don't, we don't like death. We don't like most. You know, we, we usually dislike death. We, you know, it's, it's not something that we want to talk about. So, you know, Aisha radiallahu anha, I was telling Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, no, 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 no. That's not the case. That's not the case. The truth of the matter is well, when, when death comes to the believer, when it comes to the nafsul mutma'inna, then it's going to give him glad tidings. And it's going to give him the glad tidings of Jannah. It's going to give him glad tidings of the rida of Allah. And if that individual is in that state and he's receiving those glad tidings, then guess what? He wants to die. Right? He wants to, he wants Malakul Maut to quickly take him away. But for the, for the individual who is attached with the dunya, and for the individual who does not believe in Islam, then when death comes to them, then they're going to be very afraid, and they're going to be they're going to be given glad tidings of torment and punishment. So obviously, they're not going to like death at that moment, at that moment. So that's why you know death becomes something that's that's hateful and and, and something that they dislike. So when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in in this surah, when He refers to this nafs, He says, Ya yatu an nafsul mutma'inna. That O oh, content soul, irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatim mardiyya. Return to your Lord. Yani, we were all, right? All of the arwah were by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why he's saying return. Irji'i ila rabbik. Return to your Lord. You are pleased with him. Okay. He is pleased with you. He, you're, you're pleased with him and he's pleased with you. Fadukhuli fi ibadi. He's. These individuals, he's referring to them as my slaves. Uh, like what a what a what a beautiful what a beautiful honor that is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling these individuals, hey my slaves, fadhudi fi ibadi, enter my slaves. It's, he's he's attributing it, my my right um, ibadi. He's saying, My slaves, enter, enter, come on, let's go. Yeah? Jannati, enter my Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared something special for them. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He makes us from those individuals that have nafs al mutma'inna. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us that contentment so that Islam 
and sharia and iman becomes our nature and our way of life subhana rabbika rabbil izati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen